And now, because I like to end every show with solutions to help people excel in their lives, and I'm tired of hearing about people in their their universities being held back and being taught victimization instead of success. And I'm tired of the PC culture and the totalitarian free speech zealotry idiocy, the zombie-headed thinking of university staff like these people at Mizzou. I'm tired of it. So I am going to give you some good, solid information that can help Anyone who's in school, whether you're young or old, revisiting school or anywhere in between, that can help you get what you want out of your education effort and move forward with your life in a way that can achieve some sort of success. And it all begins with this fundamental concept of defining your self-worth by internal measures rather than external measures. I'm not trying to be Dr. Phil for you here today, but I am going to share with you this this point that's really crucial. You see, most people define themselves by the things that their peers say about them. This is why so many people are so desperate to have staged photographs on Facebook and Instagram because they want to create this artificial perception that they are cool, they are trendy, they are popular. Oh my God, I went on this amazing cruise and I got this amazing dress and I have these amazing friends. Look at all my amazing photos. And it's all fake. It's all fake. And they go home back to their little rooms and cry themselves to sleep. Why are they doing this? Because They are seeking external validation of who they are inside as a person. And that is a massive, massive mistake. The strongest person, the person who has a real internal moral compass, is someone who has the ability to walk through a crowd, through a crowd of people condemning them, shouting at them, shouting racial slurs even at them, screaming at them, perhaps even threatening them verbally. But you could walk through that crowd and it does not affect what you think about yourself does not affect your belief in yourself because your belief does not depend on them. And I know this from firsthand experience because I made this transition myself as well. When I was younger, college aged, like many college aged people, I used to believe that my self-worth was defined by people outside of me, people telling me things, oh, you're great. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you you did so well on that test. Oh, you know, I was I happened to be really gifted academically, and so I got all these compliments and I allowed that to be my definition of self. But I didn't have an internal drive. I didn't have an internal compass or a mission or a sense of having earned the self-belief or the self-love, you could even say, that a successful person really has. That came later, and that came through trials and tribulations. That came through overcoming adversity, getting criticism later on. Oh, how dare you say that? How dare you write that? How dare you do that? Oh, you're an awful person. You spoke out against this. Oh, you, you wrote an article that said that. Oh, you're a horrible person. Oh, you're so awful. Oh, icky, icky, ooh. And you see, if you're still tied to that external driver of your own self-image, then you're screwed because the world will never see you for who you really are. The world is a fickle, cruel place full of people who are mostly faking it, but they're trying to fake it in a way that makes you think that they're better than you. Inside, of course, they're dying and crying and often trying to find ways to commit suicide, right? But on the outside, they act cool. Everything's awesome. Everything's great. They want to make you jealous. They want to be accepted by their peers who they want to make jealous so that they want to be around them. Let's be, let's hang around with the cool people. Let's be with, you know, cool Marsha over here, whatever. (laughs) Maybe that's not the right name. Cool Marsha. Yeah. What would be a cool name? I don't know. Cool Bethany. I don't Who knows? Whatever. Cool Bob. Cool, cool Billy Bob. He comes in with nothing but a cowboy hat, cowboy boots, and one sock. And it's not on his feet. (laughs) Cool Bob. No. Um, whatever the my point is if and i hope you excuse my my lame attempts at some humor but my point is that you've got to find this internal drive an internal compass well how do you do that this is the real secret to happiness in life 
And in my experience, you find something that matters, something that you really do feel passionate about that matters more than the job, the, the income, the nice house that you might earn one day and imagine yourself living in, the nice car that you might imagine yourself driving, the nice spouse, the trophy wife or handsome husband or, or handsome gay sex partner for all I know, whatever you're, whatever you're into, you know, but all these things are material. They do not matter at that level. It doesn't matter how much money you die with. The things that matter are not material. The things that matter are things that connect to your heart and connect to the divine. What is the divine to you? It could be this idea of consciousness. It could be the idea of free will and free expression. It could be the idea of protecting life on our planet, serving in the protection of animals, for example, or ecosystems. Maybe you feel passionate about protecting the environment. Maybe you feel passionate about science and discovery, and you want to discover new technologies that you believe can help humanity or discover new worlds out there in the cosmos that you think humanity might one day want to colonize and turn into another New York City. I don't know what your passions are, but it's up to you to find them. Maybe your passion is music, art, creative expression. Whatever your passion is, it is then time to start working on getting as good as you can possibly get at that thing. You're going to have to put in 5,000 to 10,000 hours of practice and experience to get good at any one thing, just so you know. Whether you're going to be a sword fighter, a UFC fighter, a sketch artist, a laboratory technician, a musician, a welder, whatever, you name it, you're going to have to spend 5,000 to 10,000 hours to get good at it. As you are spending this time inside in your own heart, you begin to develop a sense of self-worth and self-mastery. As you're putting in the time, it's almost like you're allowing yourself to deserve the expertise that you are learning and experiencing and you're becoming more knowledgeable. You're moving up in the world in this passion or this, this expertise that you are developing. Maybe you're studying something. You're becoming the world's greatest expert on uh, crustaceans in the Indian Ocean. I don't know. Whatever it is, you are becoming very good at that thing. And one day, you will be a master of that subject or that skill or that area of knowledge. And from that self-mastery that you earned, it was not handed to you with an artificially inflated grade. Oh, you get an A for effort. No, you earned it. Self-worth cannot be given to you artificially from the outside. Self-worth can only be expressed and blossomed from the inside because you know you earned it and nobody handed it to you. And from that sense of self, self-worth, then you begin to find that your inner compass is stronger and your need for reliance on outside external approval is diminished. And as you continue down this path, you will find that your inner light shines even brighter. It begins to take on 90% of what matters to you because you are divinely connected, perhaps divinely inspired, perhaps. That drives you, that gives you guidance, that gives you all the reward that you need to pursue this thing that you care about. And the outside external approval links diminish down to eventually zero. And at some point when you pass this threshold, you don't need external support or approval to be who you are, to speak your truth, to explore your truth, to express what you believe and what you feel passionate about and the things that you love and enjoy in life. You don't need that external approval anymore. And from that point on, you are a free person. For the first time in your life, you are free. Because at every other time in your life, you have been dependent on artificial friends, fake friends, who would probably stab you in the back if you changed your opinion on something that they felt passionate about, right? They're fair-weather friends, probably, or fake uh, Facebook friends even, who don't even really count as friends. But whatever, you, you no longer need them to be an amazing person on the inside and to feel confident and to feel a sense of worth. Now, you can, of course, you can continue to have friends. 
you can socialize, you can, you can have family get togethers. And I think that's healthy. I, I encourage that, but you don't need that. You don't feed on it. In other words, to make you feel okay with who you are. You don't need mommy and daddy to tell you that you're okay. And when you have achieved the state, also, you don't care what people say about you, regardless of your skin color or your ethnic origin or your religious affiliations, or even the way you look, whether you are physically judged as beautiful or ugly by the, the, the strange criteria of society and, and that's always shifting around anyway. What was beautiful today was ugly 20 years ago and vice versa, but it doesn't matter. What matters is what you know and believe about yourself from the inside. And in my opinion, college should be at least teaching you a hint of this. It should be empowering young adults. It should be teaching you to overcome adversity, not teaching you how to stay stuck in the victimization role where all you learn is how to blame everyone else for your failures in life. That's not going to get you anywhere. Real success takes real hard work. Real achievement in life takes real investment of time, effort, dedication, and mastery. It's not an easy path, and it's not a path that even most people are willing to follow, but it is the path that we should be teaching. We should at least set these examples for our children and our young adults in college so that they know the right path to follow if they wish to be someone great in life rather than just someone else who's whining and complaining about offensive speech. If offensive speech is going to stop you from being the amazing creative genius person that you are, then you can only blame yourself for allowing such a simple attack to cripple you and, and, and keep you away from the life that you truly deserve. Don't let other people's words destroy your life. Be stronger than that. Be resilient and find strength from the inside or from the divine. That's my answer.